life abroad is draining both mentally and financially this is five minutes past 1 a.m in the night i'm creating this content life abroad <music> Hello beautiful people, I'm glad to have you back again on this channel. Thanks so much for stopping by and um, from the title of this video, you already know what I want to talk about. So before I continue, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do, don't forget to like, comment and share this video. Relocating abroad has really really affected my business. Both my sewing business, my crafting business, even my cooking business this video is based on my personal experience and how i feel about relocating abroad so a few days ago i was going through my phone gallery i came across some of my old pictures of some clothes that i made for myself and my customers and i was like joy what is happening now i don't make clothes like i used to do before because i barely have the time I then realized that relocating abroad has really, really affected my business. Life abroad is draining, both mentally and financially. Back then, when I was in Nigeria, I used to sew. You know, there's something about moving to a foreign country. First of all, you will want to look for a survival job before you can even continue your business. That is how it is, especially in this Western world. When I landed UK, I, I, even though I had the mind of continuing my business, that is sewing, baking, but I also wanted a job that would still be giving me something. Abroad, they pay you per hour. It's not like in some countries where they pay you monthly. If you don't work, you don't get paid over here. So it means you just have to work so that you can pay your bills so that you can do other things. And most times you will just make your business um, goal secondary. That is how it is here. Or let me not generalize it. That is how most people live here. So even if you're a business person, when you come most times, it is not business you think of immediately because it is not easy to start up immediately. You'll be thinking of how you would register your business. you think of how you would get licensed. Because if you are really trying to do the business as, is, as it is supposed to be, there is need for you to register it so that you don't get into trouble here. So that is it. So when I got my first job in the UK, I opted for part-time because I wanted to continue my business. Of course, doing full-time would be too... Um, strenuous for me that I won't have enough energy to push the business so I opted for part-time so that I could continue my business so one month or one month plus after I landed I decided to get a sewing machine because I didn't want to you know leave sewing for too long sometimes you may lose interest that is how business is um, I know so many persons that used to sew back then but because they didn't um, pursue it as soon as they traveled to another country, the zeal just died down. I didn't want that to be my case. So I had to quickly get a sewing machine from Facebook Marketplace. I didn't even buy it brand new, but I just wanted to get it so that anytime, any day, I could make clothes. Another thing I did was that as I was moving down um, to the UK, I got so many fabrics, so many sewing things that could make good clothes. Because that's also another thing that discourages most of us that relocate abroad. It is not easy to get sewing things. Back then in Nigeria, I could get all that today. I would leave my, my baby with my help. I will run to the market to go buy the things. But it is not like that here. Even let's look at the aspect of getting a nanny. Getting a nanny here is as expensive as anything. But over there, a relative can even come and stay with you. Oh, please stay with my baby. Let me quickly go and get material and everything will go well. But it's not like that here. <laughs> Abroad. 
So um, I, I, I tried my best when I was in the UK to still keep the business going. I, I think I made some clothes for customers. I was still baking. I was trying. You could see that it wasn't really easy to carry all these things, to do everything perfectly. But I just tried my best. I was like, I don't want to leave this sewing business because I've gained a lot from it. And you know, making clothes abroad is not cheap. It's not cheap. Even I, the fact that I can even make clothes for myself, people will be like, who made this clothes for you? I'll be like, I did it myself. They will ask me, they will tell me, do you know how much it will have cost you if you had given this cloth out to someone to make for you? I say, yeah. So that's why I'm making it for myself. So... Sewing business is very lucrative abroad, but then running it with another job is not easy. It's not easy. Sometimes I feel bad. Other times I don't beat myself too hard because when I was in Nigeria, I had to resign at some point to face my business. But here, for you to resign, and face business then your business should be very very solid already you should have laid a very very good foundation and that does not come even within your first one year of landing or within you know it doesn't come so fast it takes some time it will take you time to register it will take you time to let people know the business you are doing thank god for social media where you can promote your work it's not that easy then if you are not a family person, that one too will add. Ha! Ah. I don't know if you are watching this video and you are in my shoes. Please, let's gather. Maybe we can encourage one another because sometimes it gives me concern. But then, if I go to market, then in Port Harcourt, if you are from Port Harcourt, you will know all in markets. There's nothing about clothes stains that you will not see, both for decorating. In fact, I can literally sit on the sewing machine, make my clothes within hours. Even when I was pregnant, I was still making clothes then. But no, we can't. It's not easy to get those things. And even when you go to their fabric shops here, it, the things are pricey. Especially when you're trying to go for something that looks like African things. They are expensive. So, this abroad, it has the good side. It also has the bad side. We need to weigh these things. So, if you are a business person and you want to relocate abroad, you need to, you know, cross your T's and dot your I's. Make sure you make all the necessary arrangements because it is very, very easy. For you to lose interest because sometimes it becomes very overwhelming you are trying to combine business you are trying to do this you are trying to do this it's just one body and you just have 24 hours so you can't really do more than 24 hours you can't do more than your capacity you will break down you will break down that's almost the story of my life i said look at um, somebody that loves hand work and then relocation has really, really, you know, tamed me. Like, just like, Joy, you are abroad now. You can't really do most things. That is exactly how I'm seeing myself. I don't know if anybody is in my shoes right now. Maybe you relocated. But you were able to thrive. You were, you were able to carry your business, you know, promote your business. And you are still doing your business well. Please, I'll be waiting for you all in the comment section. Because sometimes... We that give advice, we too, we need advice. Talent can't just die like that now. Passion can't just go like that. Recently, my mommy sent me some fabrics. I've not even been able to make anything out of it because there's no time. In fact, when I come from work, I can be on the couch for the next three hours. In fact, my shoes will still be on my legs. Like, I'm gone. I'll just be there. So tell me what I can do at that at that moment. Okay, can we even look at weekends? We only really have Saturday and Sundays. Saturdays you do house chores. Sometimes you will go for family outing, maybe take the kids out because they are not the cause of my problem. I won't say because um, I couldn't do some things within the week. 
then I would now say, you people, I won't have time for you people. I also have time for myself. No, I still need to give them their own time. So Saturday is gone. Then Sunday, you will go to church. And when you come back, sometimes you still be tired. I want to rest for the week like that. Hey. So what I do is any public holiday we usually get here, I try to make good use of it. But then it's still not enough. I'm running two channels. I'm running this channel. I'm running the other channel. I put content here. I create content for the other one. This would have been a very good place to really, really do my sewing business because of the constant electricity. But we are talking about time here. When you say, okay, you don't want to work, you want to face business, then that is another process. Another process. I don't want to um, make this video too long. I just um, did this video to just express myself on life abroad. Life abroad is not easy. You know, sometimes people at home think you are just enjoying, we are doing blah, blah, blah. They don't know that sometimes it's packaging. It's packaging. This is um this is five minutes past one a.m. in the night. I'm creating this content. You see, because the day has been busy. <laughs> this is five past one. Then I'm going to work tomorrow. So that is how life abroad the year is. Any little time you have, you quickly use it. Sometimes I go to the car to make content to make video. Probably because the noise in the house is too much and i don't want distraction i'll go to the car i'll go make video but now everybody is sleeping your girl is here creating content life abroad i'll be ending this video here and i and i appreciate you guys for watching this video this far if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet please do don't forget to like comment and share this video see you all in my next one Bye.